years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, Chapman here on this Monday, the 14th of August, almost halfway through the month. We're looking at the Dow down 48 points at 35,233. Now, I'll, uh, I wasn't going to do it, but I'll do this. Let me just show you this right here. I'll go to it this very second. Blank chart. This should be some kind of a bounce in some of the other indices. And I'm anticipating the Dow is now going to be a little weaker than the uh, S&P and the QQQ, I don't know about the IWM, but at least those two. But look at this. You see the narrowing of this is the gray line is the Dow daily chart. Uh, we're looking at the green nine period moving average starting to make lower lows and lower highs, but it's still above the 14 period moving average. And if you're looking at angles, let me just do a little straight line here. Uh, actually, let me do this. It's even better because then I know I've got a straight line. Uh, let's go through from there. Yeah, you see how that green line is testing the base of support? And we're kind of stuck in this range for now, at least for the moment. But at the same time, what we've been seeing is that the Dow showed the strength to hold the nine period moving average above the 14. Now, what I've been saying since about over here is that I'm anticipating that the strength of the nine period moving average resembles very much what we saw way back in April of uh, uh, 2023, earlier this year, and that it's going to be a process, quite a lengthy process. It will take days before the nine period moving average actually crosses negative. If it does that, I think it's going to. And one of the reasons is if you look at the S&P, there's a daily S&P. Look, it's already way down pink for a little while. If you look at the QQQ, it's even deeper. You've got an expanding pink below the 14, nine period moving average below the 14. If you look at the IWM, even deeper. If you look at the SMHs, I should mention the the, Q, the IWM is down $1.74 at 189. The S&P is actually up today, and that's what I'm expecting, a little bit of a rotation. I'm even expecting that the semiconductors are going to rally some. Uh, as I mentioned, did I do that twice? Yes, I did. There it is. Look how deep that is. Look at that pullback. That's one of the deepest corrections it's had on the downside since go way back in uh, going to the April, no, March the 31st high, down to the April 25th low. Um, it's take, It took more time then. It's a little deeper now. It's using price and time. So this is a bounce. And um, just for um, clarification purposes, I should say that uh, we, we are short. We did take a little profit on uh, the short, quite aggressively short, the, S, the semiconductors. Took a little bit of a profit on Friday and a little bit more today in anticipating a bounce. I'm actually anticipating there's a chance we're going to put that back to work for that full position. Uh, but not yet. All right. So within that context, what I wanted to say is the Dow is really struggling to go down. It's more sideways as a digestive mo mode. And now I can answer the question that I got. Actually, a few people asked me, but this was the most one. This is the most succinct that I got. And it says, <clears throat> hi, Basil. Lots of technicians are focusing on 4200 area to add money to the market. Do you see the same? I was thinking of going in with the three new buys in the area of 4,100 to 4,300 uh, rather than trying to snipe or shot the exact area. Thoughts? Thanks, Kevin. So, yeah, Kevin, I, I like your idea of stepping in, but for both of us, the implication then is that this is going to go much higher. So that even if you're averaging and your plan is to average down, that's not like you got in and it went against you. So now you're going to average in because you think if it goes back, you'll make up your money. This is different altogether. This is your plan. I like it as a plan, but you didn't really say where you would go, where your first entry would be. 
and we are right now at 4465. That is just from even the 4300 area, that is 165 points away. That's a lot. That's like 1,500 or so Dow points. <clears throat> so it's, the entry is going to be very difficult. And one of the things I'm looking at is I always believe that the semiconductors lead us up, lead us down. Um, and if you look at the SMHs right here, this digestive mode that we're looking at in the weekly chart at a peak D has pulled back under the 14-period moving average. The MACD is just to a negative. Stochastic still at 80%, and the on-balance volume is quite weak. But the 9 in the weekly chart is still way over the 14. <clears throat> now, what I wanted to talk about a moment ago, and I, I got side uh, sidetracked just by myself, <clears throat> was that nine the weekly chart, the 9-period moving average, is just barely starting to move down. In fact, I need to do this... I'll do it right now to see whether I'm right or wrong. So this is the SMHs. Uh, wait, 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 we're looking at the SMHs? Yeah. So you can see in the week. So what I was looking at. Yeah. In the, in the nine period moving average, look at this. Oh, oh. I just moved over to the uh, daily to the one minute chart and five minute chart. Since, uh, since I've got this chart up, I'm, I better do it right now. You see, yes, up five in the E mini. Uh, it's going to a leg E in the in the one minute chart, leg C in the five minute chart, and only a leg B in the in the five minute and uh, ten minute chart. So this is kind of positive. This is what I was saying that we've got to be prepared for some kind of a bounce today. Maybe the Dow will be a little weaker. Because the others are leading. So now let me go back to what I was talking about. You know, I'm always a little circuitous when it comes to looking at charts because whatever is in front of me, I'm going to analyze. But look, that 14 period moving average is still rising. It hasn't even started to turn down. To get it to turn down, look what happened right here back in March. It's uh, Let's call it 142 on the 31st of March. That's not the high. I'm just saying when it started to turn down. And then it turned down very sharply because price turned down very sharply. And here we are. We haven't even touched the green nine-period moving average in the weekly chart. That's way down at 140, uh, sorry, 137. Then we're at 147. So it's a process. So I'm answering your question, Kevin. And the answer is that it's going to be very difficult because I think if you're looking at, let's just go to Apple, which should be up today. Yeah, it's up 50, woo -hoo, 53 cents. But look at Apple on, on a monthly basis. <clears throat> Did I make a mistake? Uh-oh. SMHs. Let me just go back again. Did I do that on a monthly or a weekly? Ah, sorry. I thought there was something wrong with that. Um, I'm going back to the SMHs. The 14 period moving average has just flattened out. You can see I'll put my, my horizontal trend line. You can see it's flattened out. Um, that's the first time it stopped going up. Even here, it wasn't flattening out. It was going up. But it's April. So it's, it has come down. I knew it was something wrong. So in that particular context, what we're looking at is not just too good. Just too good. Right? right, it's a lot to talk about. I'll be right back. Dow's down 26. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So in order to answer, Kevin, I have to look at this and say on the weekly basis, the uh, S&P is holding. It hasn't even taken out the nine-period moving average, which is at uh, 43 uh, green. So let me see if I can actually read this. 43, 40, whoa, 40, 44, 49. So um, we're at 44, 69. So 44. 49. Um, that's 20 points, about two, 300 points in the day. Yeah. So let's just see what happens because <clears throat> I might, I might say to you, there is evidence that I'm looking at. I haven't seen it yet, but I might say there's evidence that some of the key stocks like the Magnificent Seven, is that what they're calling the Magnificent Seven? Wasn't that a your Brin or something? Other? Anyway. Um, so what we're looking at is if they already are one third to two thirds into their correction, we might not see that in the S in the uh, S and P. So all I'm saying is that the way you get in is going to be very very important. So rather than if you're one third, one third, one third, I would I'd be looking at this very closely, and I'd say that probably this week. I would enter some part of a position. Now, I don't know when and I don't know where just at the moment because we've only started the week. But that's the way I'm looking at it. I've got enough evidence to say there could be a huge decline, but I've got enough evidence to say the way <clears throat> that the Dow is taking its time and rolling over, the way certain um, AI stocks have just collapsed but others are actually holding very well, is telling me that if, the, if, if I get a bias to the weight of the stocks that I consider very important, starting to form a base, that's going to be important, much more important than just having kind of blindly saying 43 to 4,100. Um, at this particular point, I see buying coming in, and I know that uh, yeah, this is... Um, I, I grabbed this from uh, Larry showed it the other well he one of his guests I think Jeff Hughes showed this the other day advisors love stocks even more now they even investors intelligence says that they even there's higher participation now uh, than there was at uh, at the high back in uh, 2021 well if you look at the IAI 
the broker dealer ETF at 95.01, down 73 ticks, it's holding quite nicely. But if you look at IBKR, which is the, uh, this is the, oh, I'm looking at the weekly chart. Let me go to, no, that's good. Uh, do I need that weekly chart? IBKR, IBKR. Yeah, at a high, at an all-time high as we speak. This is in uh, uh, Interactive Brokers at 92.68, up one. So that's telling me that either we're getting to a really oversold and that we're looking at more time and then price, or it's saying we might start the next move up sooner than everyone thinks. So I'm just saying to you, I, I think you are still in the market, but you I don't know whether you got out during this pullback, but I'm just saying to you, it's, it's not going to be easy. Yes, there should be some kind of, kind of climax that says now you can get in, but not the kind of climax we saw in October of this past year, but something more, I wouldn't call it minor, but something a little less on scale. If you're looking at the VIX index, um, it's the, the pink nine period moving average is starting to rally. It's attempting to move up. So this could still be a little bit early. So I'm just saying to you, don't lock in. Ah, that's really what I wanted to say. Don't lock in on prices. Rather, let's look at the charts and say this is your best risk reward if you're looking at a two or a three part entry. And that means that your first one by nature, by the character of what we're looking at, is going to be a bit earlier. I hope that I hope that helps you. And all I'm saying to you is that uh, I'm not saying don't get in even right now. I'm saying I don't see the evidence yet that the consolidation is complete. But if I'm looking at a weekly chart and I look at this chart on the right, the right, look at this pattern on the right. Now look at it when I change to a daily chart, and you'll see we've got down sloping. Everything's down sloping. And it suggests that inside here, maybe even. The low of the 7th of uh, July at 43.97. And 43.97 is still a lot of points. It's, eight, it's almost 1,000 down points. Um, a lot of work has to be done before we can even say, hey, that's the trajectory. Okay, I think I, I wanted to do that. It's, a couple of people asked me, so answering the same way for everyone. Uh, we've got a leg E, peak E in the one-minute chart. Only have four points in the S&P, considering all the, the damage that's been done. You would expect uh, a lot of things to happen here on a day like this. But I'll go into that now. But here are a couple of questions that I had. Ooh, where did I go? Did I finish now? I just need to do this. Gold is down uh, six, not nearly as bad as you think, but it is testing the 1940 low that was made in the continuous contract from early in July or late uh, June. Uh, and we've done a left side, right side price time match. It's actually two days late to get there from the midpoint right there, that peak E, that's the plumb line. This is a bar symmetry. Uh, and that just says to me, uh, now we've got to monitor to see any kind of really good uh, bounce. But in the meantime, the dreaded H pattern is unfolding because this is now a leg C. So we, on the weekly basis, we've already gone below the left side low. It needs to close there within two bars, maybe three, that's three weeks. And then we'll see whether it can rally to the next upside resistance which was around about 1976 or 1990. All right, that's that. Silver. Silver is down a little. It's down 12 cents at 22.62. It's left side low. Now, there's a continuous contract. I'll probably have to change the numbers. Nothing changes except the price. And that price is on the 23rd of June, 22542 uh, and today's low is 22.41. So, yes, we've taken it out. And, oh, I thought I'd, I, maybe I just forgot completely. I was going to do a left side, right side price time match to that high right there. There it is. No, that's the next one is D right there. And go to the right. And we there early. Oh, today's the exact day. What a perfect match. So, from the left side low, of June the 23rd to the high of 20. I don't like to type the prices in and these when they're continuous contracts and they keep changing. 25.47 uh, on the 20th of July. Today is exactly the birthday right there. And it hit it exactly the left side, right side price time match. 
but it hasn't closed under it, but it did go below it. And the day's young, so it could still close under it. So there it is. And I should have put in the left side. This is the Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line right there. It just touched it a couple of times. Look at that. What a nice technique this is. Ha, talk about techniques. Um, today, you've got Teddy Kegsack going to be doing his uh, candlestick show, uh, candlestick webinar. It's a, it's a standalone webinar. I think it should be great. We all have our favorite candles. I have my Chapman Wave Rope candle. Nobody knows about that. Me and you. Um, I have my Chapman Wave Silent Wave candle, but he's got a whole bunch of candles. Not only that, he's got techniques how you can use options and all sorts of things with stocks and whatever you're looking at in terms of the candlestick patterns. He's going to be discussing it. It's a, it's a, I would call it a hands-on webinar because he's probably going to show you Charles actually there and how you can use them functionally. I love that. Shit. Tigers, candlestick pattern analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, that was a good one. Thank you. Someone just said, hey, tell him to get your newsletter. You've got uh, the turns. Nah, nah, nah. That was the good one. Um, MNDY is uh you know this is i i remember typing this in this is monday.com limited and um it's trading question on it 
Revenues up 42% year over year. Customers 50, uh, uh, greater than 50K. Oh, wow. This net retention rate. Oh, this, this is fantastic. And it was I, we discussed this, and I said there's a pattern that I, I people talk about, but I've never been a fan of this particular pattern. It didn't look like a stalk leg formation. It looked more like, um, uh, like a flat. What, what do you call these things? With a with rising, a wedge, an expanding wedge, followed by a contracting wedge. And I said, you know, it can break out either side. I'd rather, I always like to look at the pattern that's unfolding. In this case, it was, I think we spoke about this somewhere over there. And it was doing very nicely. And I said, in the weekly chart, I didn't have time to do the daily chart. I said, in the weekly chart, I prefer to call this a peak E right here and not call this the, the E slash F slash A G slash B, although it does have some characteristics, but the nine period moving average is so strong. This is that pattern that I call the double double hump cam, camel hump. You remember, you know, there's some camels that have two humps, and I this is the one we pattern we use for in nine in 2007 to identify the weekly chart of the S and P to say, hey. This is this should be a failure pattern. One or two peaks after that last one uh, in the summer, and then we went to October. I said that one looks to me like it's going to fail uh, in that particular pattern. This one looked to me with the nine period still holding strong that I had to wait. And I think I said I'm calling it peak A and peak B until we see that. Well, the actually it was looking lousy. I mean, it broke this pattern, and it came tumbling down almost to the 200 period moving average. And for four days. It tried to test the 200 period moving average, and it didn't. It didn't even get close enough to tag it. Now it's got this fantastic move up, 14 points up, 9% at 169. Now, one bar does, does not change a trend. Does not a trend change, as I like to say. Um, but it's very, very good. So this fits that whole pattern. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the potential that I'm looking at here. Now this one could turn into a Chapman wave. There we are, stalk leg formation. So here's your starting point. If that's a down arrow, I guess I would have to put, and it's going to fade if I'm wrong, I would have to put an up arrow and say, over. I like them when they extend sideways, <clears throat> but this is the pattern. If there's a lower low than this, that pattern is just negated and it becomes an arch formation. If, in fact, it starts to get into the 175 area on a closing basis for the weekly chart, it says, you know what, this could go all the way to a new recovery high. That all-time high was up in the 460s. It plummeted down to the uh, uh, 70s. And here it is at 169, a double. So I, just from the most, the most recent uh, pullback in October, uh, on the monthly chart, but the most recent low was back in March or so, and this is a really nice move. I like it very much, but in this environment, I am going to say, if it takes out, I'll give it all of all of uh, the rest of August, and I'll even give it the first two weeks of September. <clears throat> in that period, if it closes under 148, it says, regardless of all the good news, Something's going on. It might just be market related to say you have to do another analysis of this at a lower level. But at this particular point, as you're asking me now, up 169.68 at 13.84, MNDY is the symbol. And let's go back to it. I should have typed it in. I didn't. Monday.com is doing fabulously. So, Monday.com, um, save the day with today's action because otherwise it would. Absolutely, have looked like an arch formation. So this says you got to keep this up, and even a, on a intra-week basis, 164 is the nine period is the 14 period moving average, and the pink is still way below. It's got a lot of work to do to get a daily buy signal to buy mode. The monthly chart is still in a buy mode; nothing there has changed, but it's starting to deteriorate a little bit. And today's action saved the day. So it's I, days young. This is what the market is looking for, I bet. Stocks that in this environment are doing really well. I like this very much. Would I start a brand new position here? That is always so difficult because we haven't even finished the day. If it closes the day above 169 and tomorrow it doesn't even test 168, 
but in fact makes a new uh, recovery high from today's high, that's fabulous action. So all I'm, you asked me, when I do an analysis, that's my analysis. Next question was Tesla, and Tesla is a little different altogether. Remember, Tesla is, is going into the Apple category. It's becoming a more traditional stock in the sense that it's it, it's going to be it has the the wherewithal to um, lower their prices, their their, 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 their uh, the, the cost of the vehicles, which will affect all the others negatively, but it will also affect uh, Tesla negatively. But they have that whole charging station. They've got a whole other thing that they could create um, an intrinsic monthly income on a residual, and that's really what they're headed for, and that puts it into a different category. None of the other auto companies can think about along those lines. So is it pulling back? It's under the 14-period moving average in the weekly chart. MACD is almost close to negative, but it isn't yet. And the stochastic's down to 67%. The on-balance run still pretty good, but the 9 is still way over the 14. So I would say I like it if you're in the long, long position for – this is – I don't know if I can call it a buy and hold. It depends on where you got in. But I would like to think of it as having much more in the way of um, internal strength than some of the others, like a GM. Uh, look at that GM, very poor chart, Ford, etc. So this is the one. This is still one of the best ones. R Rivian, question came in, R-I-V-N. Uh, Rivian. <clears throat> I don't think they have, you see, he has the arch formation, just a beautiful peak D arch pulling back, I, I, different category altogether. This is purely speculative, and I would say keep the Rivian in mind if you want to play the trends, but right now it's in a downtrend. You have to wait for it to stabilize, start moving up, because it is a favorite in just terms of speculation. But for me, I, I'm avoiding that. Okay, next question came in is, um, whoa, 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 whoa. Where did it go? Um, I wrote it down. Oh, uh, yeah. Could you could you look at those uh, uh, stocks in the? Um, oh wait, I've got another question. Just want to check to see the list here. Under.com. Yep, that's very good. Uh, new game. Okay, got that. Got that. They're holding well as usual. Um, okay, got that. Got that. Okay. Uh, uh, gold. Uh, yeah, I did gold. I discussed that. Uh, the other question is Bitcoin, BTC. Bitcoin. Now, here's the big question for me. This is something that I've looked on and I haven't got an answer yet. Is there any relation between Bitcoin and gold? And my answer is I like to look at all of these dollar everything separately. So the answer is not for me at the moment. I'll be back. Dow's down seven. SMB's up twelve. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, so uh, let me just go back to this. I'm going to sidetrack as always. Um, yeah, so within the context of, uh, you know, I've got the one minute, five minutes. It's just, there's, a, there's just a possibility that we've got a two click session here, although I was busy on the show. I didn't do anything. Um, uh, right here, as the five minute chart at about 44.77 flipped to, to green. Uh, there's a chance that, yes, yeah, in leg D right now, beautiful left side, right side price tie match, but only a leg, gray leg B. It hasn't turned yet. In, oh, 89% in the stochastic. Yeah, this could be a, it could be a two-click session. We'll see. And that's exactly what I was talking about, Kevin, that uh, you've got to consider the market you're in. And I'm, I see a lot of stuff, and I have to go through that right now. Um, I have seen a lot of a lot of very. Um, for instance, look. Here is the. So Bitcoin, I think right now I'll get into it maybe in Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But at this moment, I don't see very much. I think it's had its big move. It needs a big digestive phase. But look at this, HGX. This is the Philadelphia Housing Index. Housing. Um, it's got a Chapman wave overlapping uh, wave, to a leg D. It's in a leg C right now. In the week, in the monthly chart, that says no matter what happens, it should still go to a leg D at some point in 2023. I mean, all of this, I'm looking at the, the we did have a short, we got stopped out of it in Toll Brothers. I still think it's going to go down, but I wasn't prepared to mess around. Um, we've got others that have worked fa fabulously. Um, now what we're looking at is, look at sideways action. You can use a sideways action to consolidate. Look, even now it hasn't gone pink. It's very close to going pink in the uh, nine-period moving average for the daily chart. But that weekly peak C, EFG, there's no other way I can count it unless this is A, B, C, maybe it's a D. I, I don't want to get too fancy because this wasn't an instant restart right here. If it was, I'd say, you know what, I'm going to give this an alternate count. So... <laughs> It's a process, and the process says there is still buying going on. You cannot just blankly think, oh, this is fantastic. I, we're going down I'm, and may, pick a number. So that's why I'm saying there's a chance you might have to start sooner and be wrong and then have the second chance with your second entry to be right. Or you could get the one. You're right. You get the small one. The first one, and you don't get a chance for the second or third. This is a very complex market right now. It's not an easy market at all. Okay. With that said, let's just go through these things. Elf. Remember, I had Alta. I spoke about it for subscribers. We discussed it over and over and over, how it was just an unbelievable stock. It was going to the moon. Uh, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, at a peak F in the daily chart. Uh, what was that? Yeah. At a peak F in the daily chart. 
Now, that was the one that went to a peak D at 560.60 on the 1st of May. And I put a big question saying, is this the top? And we discussed it and I said, this, the quicker you go from peak A to B to C to D, and this just kept doing it as if people couldn't resist buying it from every single dip. The big problem with this is that when it finally turns down, it's trapped a lot of people very quickly. So for one, two, three, four, five, six, nearly seven months, anybody who bought back in uh, last year towards December or January, They've seen a whopper, the biggest decline that it's had since way back in 2019 to 2020. But now look at the the one I said, I didn't realize it until about three weeks later. I said, no, I think it was maybe just a week later. I said, oh, now I've found the one that's taken over, and that's ELF. So ELF is making this double top at 137.48 high, 132 round number low on the 2nd of August, pulls back, fills a little bit of the huge gap on uh, earnings, and now it's kind of doing well, but basically think of it as struggling because it's it's like a balloon that's uh, someone forgot to hold the string. And now it's just there. Is the wind going to take it even further up or is it going to start to come down? That's the daily chart. But all the technicals are absolutely fabulous. Look at the weekly chart. Now you're seeing a little deterioration um, in the on-balance volume being way overbought. But that's the only thing that's giving you a signal to say, be a little careful. Elf is Elf Beauty. Ultra Beauty was the one we looked at. Elf Beauty has taken over cosmetics. Look at this huge move up in the monthly chart. And usually these don't give up very easily. It's a whole process to give this up. On balance volume is somewhat overbought. 96% on a monthly basis for the stochastic, uh, for the on balance volume. No, no, sorry, for the stochastic and flat. On balance volume is very overbought. But the nine, the price is way over the nine. Nine is way over the fourteen. Look at um, RCL. This was an easy buy, which I didn't do. Well, here, you know, coming out of COVID, what do you think people are going to do, huh? So this trader made a big spike on news, filled the gap. Uh, that was around about the uh, beginning, uh, the end of July. Goes to about 112. Now it's at 102. And today, the nine period moving average has just turned pink. It's a peak D. That's where you've got to be careful in the Chapman Wave methodology. In the weekly, on the weekly basis, that was a peak E way back then, 2022. Turns around, goes to peak A, B. <clears throat> Huge leg C, pulls back, goes to D. Monthly chart is only in a B. Why? Oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. It's in a D slash B because it can be an alternate count. There you go. So... Um, that is R C L D slash B. Uh, and that should be an uppercase. Sorry. D slash B. Uh, Royal Carib Caribbean Cruise Lines doing really well. Uh, next one we're looking at is C U K. They must have changed the symbol. C U K is what? C U K, if you get the right. Chart, you'll get it right there. It is C U K. So you can see we, there's no reason why we can't think that this is going to be a digestive phase. C U K made a, a top, a little double top, around about in the 17s on the, in the beginning of July. Made 100 H, which went to a, an M, and now it's, the whole thing is an H that's failed. Is at 15.10 peak D month a weeks ago in the uh, weekly chart. And peak A, B, leg C in the in the monthly chart. So uh, it's starting to digest gains. Uh, the next one on their list is C L H, C E L H, C E L H, and that is whoops, right there over there. Yeah, C E L H. This is a leg C. This is really good. Celsius Holdings, drink supplements. Man, I I followed this uh, in Investors Business Daily. But once it gapped like that, it looked horrible over there under the 50-period moving average beginning of August uh, in the 135s. And here it is at 180 in leg C. I almost had it today and something to buy for subscribers. And then I decided, you know... If it gaps up and then it suddenly pulls back here yeah, at right, 100 and uh, something or whatever, it would be 176 and you just get stuck. Let's not do that. But this is good. In fact, it's only a leg C 
and is in a buy mode, a new buy mode in the daily chart, the weekly chart hasn't changed from buy to buy before. And they, and the E in the weekly and they'd see in the monthly. So yeah, this is looking very good. Someone said to me, right, well, what stocks are looking very good? This is looking fabulous, CLH. I'll be back, Celsius Havens, drink supplements. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So uh, you can see a beautiful cup formation here in the five-minute chart. Went from a peak D around about 7 o'clock, pulls all the way back, makes this H pattern successfully, which can turn into a beautiful cup formation, which it did. And the question came in, why did I, I had this as a peak B at the moment at, at the 10 minute chart, because that was an A, but that went lower and I forgot to put that in as a new A. But this is what I like to do. I like to be always a bit cautious when I'm doing these things. Sometimes it costs me, but sometimes it's really worth doing. And I'm calling this a potential gray A. If it goes above that E, I'm going to call it an F. Why? That's really the starting starting point. Yes, this looks like a brand new starting point, but I just, in this environment, I want to be a little careful. So I'm watching closely to see both in the one minute and the five, how does it, how does the E mini handle the 4500 here? If it starts to go to 4505 and then 4508, absolutely. Then we should have. Good, good buying um, most of the day. So within that context, I've got a couple of questions. Let me just see if there's one quickly here that I need to look at. 
uh, uh, yeah, where's a good point if someone got out of the position that we had completely? We, we didn't. Uh, in the SOXS, where's a good point to get in? Have patience. We'll see what happens by the end of the day. It might be a day or two. I am expecting the SMHs to have a bounce. There's no reason why they can't. They've got a massive pullback, one of the biggest that they've had in a while. That's why we took profits again this morning. Yeah, look, the SMHs are now up almost three points, filled in the gap from Thursday into Friday. So what I'm going to say is this. If this rally holds all the way into past 2 o'clock, I'm even going to make it 2.15, I'd say to subscribe to my opening call. Let's make it 2 o'clock, but let's go even to 2.15. And is hold the Dow. I'm treating the Dow now because the Dow's come back strong. If the Dow is up 65 or more points and the S&P is up 28, 30 points, there should be a really good close. And this could go right into tomorrow unless there's no bad news. The trend hasn't really changed. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Don't forget Teddy's webinar today at 4 o'clock. Stay tuned for Steve Rose for all the great programming. Check out my opening call.